What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to YGOPD or Yu Gi Oh! Professional Development. And today I am excited to bring you Pure Snake Eye. I've been testing this for a while and really excited that I finally got all the cards from Phantom Nightmare. Really excited to bring this. Um, I think Pure is just the best build right now. I don't think you need to add the unnecessary bricks and things of Fire King just to add a little bit. I think Pure does enough on its own. You could experiment with Horus. I think that's the one thing in the back of my mind right now. I feel like that engine fixes a lot of issues in the format, plays around Droll, Super Poly. People are starting to cut Ash, so it just checks almost all the boxes. So I really think I might go that direction with it. But for now, this has been testing really well. This is kind of my version 1.5, I would guess. I think the main thing that's changed a little bit has been non-engine. Shout out to a lot of my testing group and friends that have helped me kind of work through some of that but yeah without further ado i'll go ahead and showcase the deck okay starting with the main deck really excited to have this finally but we're on three ash um obviously you're gonna see a ton of cards the way that i would almost describe this pure snake i built is similar to marincess um but a much higher impact and much higher ceiling and more consistent and plays through hand traps but you can build it even at 40 cards in a 20 20 split to engine and non-engine where like about, I don't know, 15 to 17 of your engine are all just one card starters that do everything, which is insane. Um, but Ash is obviously your best normal summon followed by two Poplar. Um, you could play three, but I think the general consensus is two is fine. Ash is the normal summon you want. Poplar still does the full combo by itself, um, but Ash is just a little bit better because you get a little more value off the free summon from Poplar. But two is fine. I think for now, if you're like don't have bonfires but still want to play this deck i think you could get away with just one poplar one princess and still see a lot of you know results that way but that's it for the main end starters of the snake eye we'll get into some other starters later but rounding out the snake eye package is going to be one oak one birch and one flamberge birch is actually really underrated i think there's some people not playing it but it's really good it um is a general extender and also is a piece that you can end on your end board if you want to help play around things like imperm um on like your turn zero for your opponent or essentially i guess their turn one to dodge cards like imperm right off the bat on your flamberge trying to bring out something like an ip from the spell trap zone so Still a really good card. And then the last couple of cards that round out that package is one Divine Temple and one Original. These are the main targets you're adding with Poplar. Uh, you could play more. Um, I've just found that Dramatic Chase is really only good if you already have combo plus something else to then get Witch to get the trap for the Omni Negate. I think you don't need to risk playing those extra things. I think you're fine. Depending on how the format progresses with Soul Release and stuff, you could also bump Flamberge up to two. But for now, I think this has all been fine. I think if you're really considering adding one other card i if you want to play dramatic chase i would consider adding the uh quick play spell almost the pop um from i think age of overlord or whatever whenever that first came out for to use with the witch as a spellcaster i think is really good but for now i think this is truly all you need so um moving on there with extra starters again rounding that out and another way to get to original is just three witch and three wanted you just have an insane number of starters here between witch wanted ash poplar original and of course <laughs> three bonfire this card is really ridiculous as you know just does everything for the deck the existence of poplar makes this card really really insane um, and then the last engine card we have that's also just another starter is one for one you have so much free advantage in this deck there's no reason not to play it so that's the cool thing is this deck is as expensive as it is, is expensive for a reason because that's 20 engine that are all almost all exclusively starters outside of maybe, you know, Flamberge, Temple, Oak, and Birch. I think everything else in here, as long as I'm looking at that right, is a starter. So that's 16 starters, which is really good. Um, and four of those aren't even that bad to still open. And on top of that, you have this thick 20 card stack of non-engine you can do whatever you want with so i'll showcase how i'm using it uh, for hand traps we're on three droll i think this is probably going to be the most mandatory hand trap in the format moving forward and then three imperm those are the only hand traps no ash no bell i think bell might come into play um, again as we see the format develop i think it's a for sure play in the side deck but ash is just not as impactful now because it's either especially when in the mirrors for this deck even the fire king version right it's like you hit one thing they're going to have island bonfire which wanted original one for one there's so many other options where it's just ash isn't enough you want cards that either stop their entire turn like droll or hand traps that you can either know that you're going to hit a key piece and it's going to negate it or you just want to save it to force out something on you know when it passes back to you so uh three fenrir 
Still one of the most underrated cards in the game. Uh, forces a lot of interaction out on the Snake Eye board because they don't put up any Omnis typically on their board unless they're doing Jet. And even then, they're not really doing Jet unless they have two ways to combo. So I think Fenrir is still just a really insane card. Provides a lot of advantage. And then the next card is... I think the main reason why I liked playing this deck and wanted to play it and has been my favorite card from Phantom Nightmare is three Meow Mine. This card is amazing. It just cooks when I test like no other. Um, it does a couple things. I've made a two minute tech video about that. If you've not seen that, feel free to take a look. But essentially, it specials it summons itself for free from the hand as an inherent special if there's a link monster on the field. So you're always having link Karibo in rotation. So it's just a free extender, which is great. And then if a link two outside of the damage step goes through the grave or gets banished, you can banish this and then bounce a card on your opponent's field back to the hand. So it's really insane removal. A great extender works with IP being linked off, works with SP banishing itself, uh, even works if you're just re regularly link climbing. It just does so much. This card is just by far my favorite card in Phantom Nightmare. If you're playing any deck that just keeps links in rotation like this, Rescue Ace, um, I recommend playing this. It's just an insane card. Uh, and then three Super Poly. I think, uh, shout out to my boy Mario, we were talking a lot, and I think he's 100% correct, that the move right now for the format is just three Droll and three Super Poly at the minimum, plus whatever non-engine you want. Super Poly just cooks almost every board out there right now with Snake Eyes and Fire King. Everything's going to be Garua Mud Dragon targets, however you're doing it. So this card is just a really, really good card, um, and it's something I really like if you're not a big fan of Nib like I am. Um, it feels good to still have this at that same aspect where it's a really great card going first that you can still set and use or just you know use it on your opponent's turn you don't have to worry about the nib being like a dead six card draw so super poly is insane and then rounding out the non-engine two econ i really like this i had it at three for quite a bit but i think two is fine <clears throat> this card might be one of the cards i cut if i start trying to put in the horse stuff um because zombie vampire is pretty decent photon lord is insane and just the horse package itself is just sometimes game winning just kind of like Fenrir um, so this might be a card I cut but overall this card overperforms every time there's just times where I've drawn multiples and it doesn't really feel good so um, yeah two econ is definitely really solid you have a bunch of free bodies all the time and then rounding out the deck at again a clean 40 cards is the double talents and the one called by I draw this card all the time it's insane best card in the deck um, <laughs> but yeah these are all fine I think uh, talents is still going to be kind of a mandatory stay in the deck now moving forward because droll is going to be everywhere so you want to have some way to slow your opponent down by ripping a card out of their hand, taking a body, whatever. Um, but talents, I think, is just a necessary form in some capacity. So that's the main deck. A clean 40 cards and a even cleaner 2020 split for engine and non-engine. So um, yeah, I'll talk about the extra deck. I think the extra deck is the hardest version of any snake eye build you're playing because you have a million and one options and so much like little space to work with. So I'll show you where I've kind of landed. There's a lot of things that I would like to include that I've not even in the main deck. I've thought about cards like fire recovery, uh, but starting off underworld goddess, a lot of the choices in this have come out of the results of my kind of immediate testing. This might change, but a lot of decks, I think, kind of lean more now towards cards like Chaos Angel um, has been a big one for Lab and other like, you know, decks that play Lights and Darks and stuff like that, even combo through uh, Dragon Link and other things. Um, shout out to my boy Sunny. And there were just ways that like this deck can't out stuff because even if you make a big access code, you can't kill it by battle. If you make Zealantis, it's unaffected by monster effects. So outside of cards like Econ, Imperm, Super Poly, I wanted some type of in-engine quote unquote way to utilize the main deck stuff to out on like towers monsters basically. And this was it. And it's done really well. It's come up at least like every other match that I've played so far because you just have a million bodies. So it's been really free. Uh, for the fours, we have one Ambla Whale, obviously a necessary include. One Apo, I still think this is a good card to pivot to if you're concerned about Super Poly, maybe going into matches like two and three or games two and three. Uh, one Zealantis and uh, one Salaman Great Raging Phoenix. I know there's there's quite a lot of four or five like high level links, which is really odd to see in a deck, but this deck just has no problem making any of them for whatever reason. It's just kind of crazy because the amount of free bodies you get. Um, I think the real question that a lot of people I think are wrestling with is to do either Zealantis and the Raging Phoenix package or the Selene Access Code package. The more I test, I 
like the battle phase pop for spot removal. It's nice, but I almost want to move back towards access code in Selene just because climbing into that with charmers and things seems to be a lot easier and a little bit less work. And originally I was on both, so you can do whatever, but right now I'm I'm just kind of had to choose one or the other because of super poly targets and things for space, but they're both good in their own right. I think it just depends up to you what you're most worried about. After that, we are on, of course, two princess. Um, I had it at three, um, bumped it back down to two. I've been playing around with these numbers. The reason that two, I think, is coming up more and more now is people are, I think, not respecting Kashtira as much, even though they think like it's going to get eclipsed. I still think it's a really powerful deck. Unicorn ripping stuff is important. Also, Buzz King is a really insane card right now with a lot of decks that can't afford to play Snake Eye. I think are pivoting to like Horus plus something and doing a Buzz King rip at the beginning, especially if you only have one princess, is kind of detrimental to this deck by a lot. So I really think if you have two princess or can borrow a second one or whatever, I think two at minimum is really really needed because i cycle through them a lot um but yeah and then unicorn of course and then the two charmers again unicorn is a flex spot you could probably cut for something i just like it um i like i wanted something if i wasn't playing Celine to still climb into that's not princess um on occasion if i really need it unicorn is one of those um i don't have nightmare phoenix in here and that's also one of the places i want to make room for it nightmare phoenix might even come up a little bit more than link karibo or sorry uh, nightmare phoenix um but yeah there's just a lot of different options space wise for this deck and then one SP, one IP. I do still want to put a second SP back in as well. I just don't, there's just not enough space in this deck because you can just make anything in the world that you want. And so now your options are unlimited, but your space is. So it's just, it's just hard. But these two are great. With Meow Mind, these cards just feel insane. Meow Mind's also a really insane card if you get like double hand trapped under like droll imperm or droll ash or whatever to still be able to make like an ipsp with a meow mine engrave and maybe a body on board is still going to be like two to three interruptions is really good so that's the other reason i like it a lot one link rebo again another card i'd like to have in here is anima but space wise eh. and the other thing is moving into the fire format now a lot of people are just going to leave like a level one or something in their anima zone excuse me i don't think uh Anima is going to be as impactful right now, and good players theoretically should play around Anima anyway. But um, I've just always been a big fan of that card. It's overperformed for me. So if I can find the space, I'd like to squeeze one in, but it's not needed. Link Rebo matters more, especially with Meow Mine, to keep that in rotation. And then uh, the Super Poly targets, just one Mud Dragon, one Garua. That's really all you need. So that's it for the main deck and the extra deck, a clean 40 cards. What I will do is I'll cut for a second and I'll just showcase the quick combo that I typically go for with my end board off of just one starter, for example. Okay, I'll showcase a quick combo just utilizing Ash. You can do any of the starters pretty much, which wanted Poplar. Um, they all pretty much get you there. One of the normal summon ways or ways to a one of the main Snake Eye monsters do it. Um, but I'll just use Ash for you know ease of example. Um, what you'll do is you'll normal summon Ash, and there's a lot of variations to the combo as well that I'll kind of try to call out as I go through. You'll add the Poplar. Poplar's effect will summon itself, and then its effect will trigger, and you can get original. I personally like going for original. If you play two Flamberge, typically you would get the temple and place a Flamberge there, so that way you're kind of proofed like through Nib and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think you need it as long as you kind of manage your resources correctly. But the more I play, we'll see how prevalent Nibs becomes. And if it really is that that relevant, then I'll just probably throw in a second Flamberge and switch to the temple line. But for now, this is the line that I like. Uh, from here, what you'll do is you'll link off the Poplar. Um, we'll put this uh, right here in grave. Zoom out just a little more. You'll see some junk in the background, but it's okay. Uh, put the Poplar there. And then you'll make a Link Karibo, of course. And then Poplar's effect will trigger, putting itself back here in the Spell Trap Zone. And then what you go ahead and do is you can either use this or save it. A lot of the times I end up saving it. What I'll do is I'll just use Ash to get rid of... Um, well, you could do it a couple different ways, right? But I'll, uh, I'll get rid of Ash and Poplar just as a basic example here. And then you can go ahead and get... Uh, Flamberge from deck if you want, or you could get Oak first. Um, I'll get Oak just to kind of showcase what that looks like. So we'll go ahead, grab Oak. Wherever Oak is, there we go. And then Oak's effect on summon will bring back something. There's a few different ways you can do it. You could go straight for Flamberge, other things like that. You get a second body, then you can use Oak sending itself and the Link Karibo to get the Flamberge from the deck. Um, you could kind of 
try to play it safe and hold this as a way to get oak later. You don't really need it, but that's I kind of wanted to show the simplest version. That's why you can always do the temple one if you really want. And then from here, what you do is you link these two off. You go ahead and make an IP Mascarena. Go ahead and grab that. And then the Flamberge Engrable Trigger, bringing back to level one. Since all the effects have been used, it doesn't matter what ones you get, you get whatever. And then you link off one and the IP to make a princess. And then Princess's effect will reborn the Flamberge. And then Flamberge will go ahead and put IP back here in your spell trap zone. The original is still in hand. And then from there, you go ahead and get rid of Princess and the last level one body on your board for a copy of the Ambler Whale. And that's pretty much it. You could use this if you want to try to do the combo a little bit differently, uh, save some bodies and keep Oak in the deck. So if you do get nibbed here, you could like still reborn the Oak. Um, and typically they would probably do it on like summon before this places. So then you could still get two bodies and make like an SP or something like that. But you can use this or you can just hold it as follow up. Sometimes I like holding it, but this is the bare minimum board. So uh, what you can do is on your opponent's turn, right? You have one interrupt through princess, a second interrupt eventually through Ambla Whale, a third interrupt, I guess, well, at three and four, I guess, technically through IP because you're going to typically make SP and that's two more interrupts there. So all that's off of one card. Um, and plus you have just like unlimited follow up if Flamberge goes and you get more bodies back. So like you could get Oak and Ash. And then Oak brings back Poplar, Ash searches, and then Poplar searches for Temple. So you have like insane pluses there. Um, but all that's just off one card. It's a basic combo that I kind of like doing for now just as a way to test. But yeah, that's it. That's pure Snake Eye. Let me know what you guys think. What engine, non-engine techs have you enjoyed using? But with all that being said, I'll see you all in the next one. Later.